Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Ulan Gaming, and I have another new build order to show you guys today. I wanted to get this video out before the DLC dropped, and I spend all my time making multi-build orders and flamethrowers and burning everything to the ground. Uh, so I thought a build order that wasn't USA for once might be also kind of fun. Uh, so today I'm bringing you the India Fast Industrial. Now, what I will say is that this strategy is not an original of mine. It's actually a strategy I learned about years ago uh, on Legacy uh, from Samurai Revolution. However, that is not to say I haven't modified and adjusted it to keep up the more modern changes to the game, so here we are. Uh, it's, it's, it's mostly based on Samurai's strategy, but it's still got you know my own isms, just like any other strategy that anybody does. Um, this strategy is one I have been doing for literal years now, and is an absolute blast every time I get to perform it. Uh, and as ever, with this guide, I hope some of you can ha have an absolute blast performing this crazy strategy as well. Uh, so let's get into our unit selection. Our primary unit, the unit that will be the backbone and core of our army, is the Sepoy. Now, while Sepoys are famous for being incredible units age 2, they're also known for falling off in the later stages of the game due to other civs having musketeer upgrade cards that simply don't exist for India. So you might be wondering why we're picking a unit like that as the core of our army for a fast industrial. Well, the reason is because this isn't just a strategy that goes to age 4, it's a fast industrial. We aren't going to age 4 to keep up in economy growth and unit upgrades, we're going to age 4 as soon as we can to get better units and shipments than anybody else. As such, a in a strategy like this, combat cards are not as important as we likely won't have time to send them. And without combat cards, Sepoy are just really strong musketeers. They have higher bases and scale off of the uh, and scale off of those compared to a normal musketeer. Uh, they're still powerhouses uh, with their normal upgrades and don't need to be super upgraded to serve their job of being a sturdy backbone into the army. Uh, and fight is and fight well against most units in the game. Uh, they don't need combat cards when you're going to the industrial age fast, they just need their normal upgrades and they'll scale off those very, very well. Uh, their job for us is to be tough and damaging and in the way, and they do that wondrously. This strategy isn't about out microing your opponent, it's about getting to the point where you can right click their base and call it a day. Other support units that we will be using throughout the game include Urumi Swordsman, uh, a melee skirmisher type unit with high HP and area of effect. Uh, Mahouts, which everyone is familiar with, and Great Bombards from the Consulate, as well as whatever else you feel like training. Uh, while this strategy is serviceable as 1v1, as a, a solid turtle boom strategy, uh, this strategy shines its brightest in a team game, where you can somewhat rely on your allies to help deal with early pressure. Now that we... It, it, not that we won't be able to do that on our own, it's just easier with another person. Uh, this build order is also one you will likely want to practice once or twice solo uh, before bringing it into a game, as there's a lot to do in this strategy itself without the chaos of an actual match. It's uh, it, It's got a lot of steps to it. Uh, now that all the pre-strategy context is out of the way, let's start from the beginning. In Age 1, India has two main options available to it. A 10-10 that gets you to Age 2 exceedingly quickly at the cost of Eco, or an economic focus start that results in you having one of the slowest age ups. You either go super fast or super slow. Uh, there are of course other openings, but those are the main two that you'll find. Uh, as this is both a fast industrial and about as greedy as you can get away with while in supremacy, we will obviously be opting for the economic slow start. Uh, to do this, collect your crates and set all of your villagers to wood. Queue your first vill from the town center and put that on wood as well. Seven villagers on wood gives us a constant production of vills. Uh, also, use your starting wood to make two houses as well. Uh, every vill after the first seven will go to food, so that you can start working towards your age up. Now, make sure you're actively using your explorers to their maximum, taking as many treasures as you can, and particular, particularly taking as many herdable animals if you can, uh, if they're on the map. As many of you know, India cannot collect food from herdables like llamas or water buffalo, but instead the herdables offer a trickle of XP like a bunch of tiny XP factories. On any livestock map, they take priority over treasures. As for treasures themselves, there is no priority. We need an abundance of every resource, so every resource we attain from treasures is a win. Uh, take as many as you can of any and every resource type. Now it's time for our first card, Distributivism. 
Due to India's civ bonus of getting a villager with every shipment, distributivism is massively powerful, bring, uh, being three and a half villagers worth of gathering power and giving you a source of wood that never runs out, no matter what. Uh, when the shipment arrives, move three vills off of wood and over to food, leaving four on, wo uh, on wood with your trickle to continue producing villagers. Age up with the agra fort as soon as you're ready, uh, and constructing it with two vills. Place the agra defensively in your base to help with defense, because uh, you're, you're, you're not going to be pushing for a little bit, I'll tell you that much. Um, during transition, we have quite the checklist of things to do. Set eight villagers to wood, from four to eight, and split all other villagers evenly between food and coin. Uh, without idling your TC, construct a market and research hunting eagles as well as blanket filters and civil servants. These upgrades, these are the upgrades that affect food gathering, coin gathering, and a slight gather boost to all resources in that order. Uh, this is an extremely economic build order that will result in us going to the industrial age without ever shipping resources, and as such, it's important that we get our gather rates as high as we can. Now, as you hit age 2, send your second card for in logging. This gives you an even bigger wood trickle. Uh, get the second market upgrade for food gathering, and then start training a full batch of 5 sepoy from your agrofort. This results in 7 total sepoy rather early in the game to help us take treasures and defend your town. Uh, if you have reason to think you will not be raided, use these sepoy to take treasures with your explorer. In general, I can't stress enough that if you have military, you should do something with it. You don't want it to just be chilling around uh, it, it, on the off chance that somebody shows up to raid you. That is, unless of course you're fighting Germany and you can expect constant raids throughout the entire game, but overall, if you have military, it's better to do something with it than not, so take big treasures, do whatever you need to do, you know, harass some villagers that are way too far forwards or something like that. Uh, as uh, So, as foreign logging arrives, move two villagers off of wood, leaving six on wood. Maintain an even number of food and coin gatherers. Uh, so, we have, so we have six on wood, even number of food and coin. Uh, with minimum TC idle time, research Imperial Bureaucracy at the market for another gather boost to all resources across the board. Uh, this takes five. Uh, th this makes five market upgrades very quickly in the game, and this is the last one we will be researching for a while. Uh, this, it, 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 with this, your your gather rates will actually just be quite quite crazy. Uh, continue to gather resources while collecting treasures and defending your base. As you get enough wood, construct a consulate, but do not ally yourself uh, with anything yet. Soon, it will be time for the next card, Diplomatic Intrigue. This delivers 300 export and greatly lowers the export cost of choosing an ally. As the card arrives, ally yourself with the Ottomans and research the villager tech, delivering four more villagers. Do not exceed 12 gatherers on coin. Uh, 12 is the sweet spot we need for our economy. So after, uh, so when, once you have 6 on wood and 12 on coin, instead of keeping food and coin even, uh, just put any excess to, to food. Uh, while on the topic of diplomatic intrigue, let's examine the deck. Uh, we obviously have lots of H4 cards at our disposal. Uh, we also have 5 sepoy in H2 and 9 sepoy in H3. Uh, these cards exist as panic buttons if you are pushed early and in need of more units very, very fast. But 9 Sepoy in particular is a fantastic card to send on a livestock map where you have much more XP gain than normal. This card sent in transition from 3 to 4 will greatly boost your mass, uh, allowing you to defend your, yourself or just start building up your, your, your mass uh, faster. During games without excessive livestock, however, it's better to save any unnecessary shipments until age 4 itself. During the strategy, if you're pushed, you can hold most rushes in the game. Uh, between your explorers, your fort, and seven sepoy, your defense is already pretty decent, uh, but seven sepoy obviously might not be enough to defend your base against a, a meaningful push. Uh, in this case, you can call both sentries and regulars from your TC, as well as an Ottoman tech at your consulate that allows you to call six Minutemen, making your army size go from seven to 21 units in the blink of an eye. Between that and the fort and your previously mentioned explorers, most rushes will fail uh, to you unless they ha are like all in and have a ton of heavy power. They'll just break. Uh, they'll, they'll just break. Uh, 
where this strategy struggles is timing attacks. The biggest counter to this strategy is a power spike at the 10 minute mark where you're at your weakest. Uh, as it's after the Minutemen lose their value, but before your massive power spike. It's kind of a, this awkward period, you know, your preteen stage, if you will. Should this happen, you will struggle to stay afloat without a teammate to help you out. Uh, all strategies have their counters, and this strategy in particular is countered by a 10 minute timing attack. Uh, age up using four of your coin gathering villagers with the Taj Mahal uh, for 800 coin in crates. This leaves eight villagers on coin, six on wood, and everyone else on food. This will feel slow to get out of age two, and indeed, for a fast industrial, it is. Uh, in the footage you're seeing in this video, I don't start aging until like around 9 minutes, which is extremely slow for a fast fortress. However, we're not doing a fast fortress, we're doing a fast industrial. And the reason that we take so long is because we do all that prep work uh, we did to, to build our economy, and that's about to pay off. Because as soon as we reach age 3, three we'll be able to collect the coin from our age up, and immediately go to age 4 with no delay, effectively skipping age 3 entirely and reaching the 4th age around 11 minutes and 30 seconds, with a massive powerhouse of an economy. Uh, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. For now, let's talk about the transition from 2 to 3. During transition, construct a barracks. Even though we were able to train Sleep Whale already at the Agra, we needed the barracks in order to be able to research upgrades for them. Upon hitting age 3, researching Discipline Sleep Boy will be the top priority. Uh, do not forget uh, to keep making villagers and houses as well. Uh, especially houses, because your population is about to get very high very, very fast. Uh, upon hitting age 3, as discussed previously, use your Taj Mahal builders to collect the coin crates and go back to the mine. As you get the resources to age up halfway through collecting the crates, start aging to age 4 with the Chalmineer Gate for 2 Mahouts and the ability to train Mansubdars. Uh, use 4 more villagers that aren't collecting the, those coin crates for it. Uh, as you start aging to 4, even out your villagers on food and coin, continuing to maintain 6 on wood. Uh, if you feel like, you can also put a 7th one there as well. Uh, you'll likely have some 16 to 17 vills on both food and coin. Uh, start training batches of sepoy from your aggro. Uh, as sepoy costs 3 times as much food as coin, this will create a surplus of coin slowly, and that's good. We're trying to get the 600 wood and coin we need to get honored sepoy upgrade, and we are aiming to get it as soon as we can in the 4th age. If you have lots of livestock, ship 9 sepoy. Otherwise, stockpile all your shipments and wait for age 4. Upon hitting age 4, ship 14 sepoy from your home city and train the Mansubdar sepoy from your wonder. Uh, as you've delivered 2 Mahouts from aging up, you may need to wait on this a little bit to build enough houses to do all this. Uh, keep training batches of sepoy as well. Uh, your mass should grow exponentially fast. The Mansubdar Sepoy from the gate is a Sepoy with twice the HP as a normal Sepoy. It provides an aura boost to all other Sepoy around it, boosting their stats by 10% HP and attack. Much like a Daimyo or any other aura, but for both HP and attack. Uh, this boost applies to Sepoy's current stats, not their base stats, making it scale much better the later the game goes, once again just like any other aura. Additionally, uh, research, uh, research Honored Sepoy at your barracks as soon as you can. This upgrade is extremely important to get relatively quickly, and it's okay if you have to go idle uh, or have to buy a little wood to do so. In fact, you'll probably go idle for a few seconds anyways, as you desperately try to gain enough houses to support the suddenly massive army you attained all at once. Uh, as soon as this upgrade is researched, keep 12 to 14 vills on coin, and move everybody else over to food. This is not only a much, a much better macro for Sepoy, uh, it, in it additionally creates a uh, surplus of food, and most of the powerful late game in India shipments for military cost large amounts of food, so it's important that we get said surplus. Your next shipment will either be 4 Mahouts or 9 Arumi and 1 Mansubdar Arumi. Uh, this depends on what you'll be facing. It's matchup dependent. Enemy making lots of skirmishers? Ship Mahouts. Enemy making lots of musketeers? Ship Arumi. It's as easy as that. Uh, this applies to the rest of the game, really. Uh, but if you, shipped Ma if, if you ship Mahouts, if you start with Mahouts instead of Arumi, then you'll inevitably you know, run out of Mahout shipments. 
Uh, and when that happens, it's time to start, start spamming the nine infinite Urumi shipment. Urumi are incredible units to completely clear large masses of musketeers in the blink of an eye. Uh, simply put, if they make contact with a mass of heavy infantry, that mass is dead and there's no two ways about it. These guys devastate and it's no joke. Uh, lastly, assume, uh, very soon you will reach 850 export. Assuming you did not research Minutemen, when this happens, research the Great Bombard tech, and then sever relations and switch to British for an HP aura. Uh, the Great uh, Bombards are fantastic cannons that will serve you greatly regardless of what threat you're up against, as long as you make sure you protect them, that is. Uh, the Bombards will arrive at around the 15.30 to 16 minute mark, and if you haven't started already, this is when you push. Uh, you have kept to your base this entire time, uh, if you've kept to your base this entire time and haven't like lost units going out and poking, uh, this mass is big enough to simply right-click your opponent's base and win the game, probably. Uh, your power spike is hard enough to even win 2v1s and turn losing team, uh, a losing team game completely around. Uh, from this point, the game is yours to play, as you see fit. You can build some more forward barracks and train more sepoy, uh, finish your market upgrades, or really do whatever you want. Uh, you'll find yourself hitting 200 population very easily, with only about 45 to 50 vills having like a 150 population army. Uh, it's really hard to overstate just how powerful your power spike is, and in most fights you'll find yourself simply steamrolling over your opponents unless, unless they are especially prepared. Or, like, you know, top-level pros, but I mean, that's the counter to everything in the game. Uh, that's basically the gist of it. Thank you guys for watching, hope you learned something about India in this video, and goodbye. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was, as ever, a ton of fun to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And have a great day.